Okay, so um, we have learned about the uh, the first scenario for functional linear model. Basically, is the response is the scalar, and the uh, predictor is 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 a uh, uh, is a function. Okay, so we also call a, a scalar on function regression. So now uh, let's look at the second scenario uh, when we have a, a response at the function and the covariate as a scalar. So, um, so basically uh, here, uh, the response, suppose the response is, is, a, is a function yit and then the covariates will be a scalar. So these covariates can be a group labels or can be a just a scalar covariate. Um, so um, when the uh, predictor is just the group of information, this is also called a functional ANOVA model. So here um, we have uh, the, uh, this is the uh, mean temperature, delay mean temperature um, uh, for 35 Canadian cities. And uh, so uh, the geography of Canada, uh, if you know that, uh, so Canada generally can be divided by four regions. And uh, so Atlantic regions, continental regions, um, Pacific region, Arctic regions, okay? So here, um, in this uh, example, we want to answer that whether um, these four regions had any difference in their temperature. So um, in that case, uh, we can write down a functional ANOVA model. So basically uh, XIJT is the ice curve in the JS group. Uh, with the uh, NJ curve in each group. So then we can write down XIJT equal to a mean, grand, grand mean function mu t plus a regional mean function or group mean function uh, alpha jt plus epsilon ij. So then uh, we can estimate uh, uh, each uh, uh, the uh, overall mean mu t by taking the average of the all the uh, curves, and then we can uh, estimate the effect for uh, each group by look at the uh, average of uh, curves in each group minus the 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 overall mean function. So this uh, alpha j t stands for the effect for each group. So this is the um, estimation. And uh, so here, uh, this, this one to show the, um, the average temperature from the, the whole of uh, four groups. And uh, so the rest uh, four panels uh, to show the uh, difference of each uh, uh, group uh, compared to the um, compared to the overall uh, average. Um, then we can um, do a test. We can test the significance by defining the uh, pointwise F statistic. So um, basically uh, we, the numerator here in the F statistic is the variance of the, uh, of the fitted uh, uh, fitted uh, uh, values for the curves and uh, the denominator in the F statistic is the uh, residual curves uh, for, the, for the fit. So, um, so this, is, uh, this F statistic is easy to construct and uh, calculate. The only problem is that uh, it is hard uh, to know the uh, effective degree freedom. Um, 
uh, all the, so this FT is a uh, is change over time, right? So uh, to test the overall regression significance, uh, we want to based on the the maximum of the F statistics, F statistics. So we define the F star to be the maximum of the F statistic. So, so then it is hard to look, find out the distribution for the, uh, for the F star. So therefore uh, we are using the permutation test. Okay. Uh, so basically um, the permutation test is to test whether uh, the effect for each group to be equal to zero for all group or not. So, um, so here, um, we will um, permute the index uh, one to n to become i one to i n because originally the group information is is so each uh, index match to a group, right? So now we kind of will uh, shift. Uh, so we uh, we change the uh, the ind indexes, and uh, so so then uh, there will be no group information anymore. And then we do the uh, F ANOVA model. And then we calculate the um, maximum of the F static over the whole range. Whole range. And so we do this for uh, multiple times and we find out the, uh, the empirical distribution for this uh, maximum F static. So, uh, so then, uh, if this, uh, uh, after know this uh, distribution for the F star, then we can look at uh, how the uh, F star from the real data compared to the distribution of the FB star. And then we can find out the uh, P values. So this is uh, the uh, test for the regional effect. So uh, here, uh, this uh, solid lines is uh, is the observed pointwise F static, and um, uh, so these dotted lines is the uh, pointwise uh, five percent critical values, and the dashed line is the maximum five percent critical values. Um, so you can see here um, the maximum uh, five percent critical values. Is, is more conservative, is larger than the pointwise 5% critical values. Uh, in either case, our observed uh, F static will be always higher than the critical value, 5% critical values. So, uh, so therefore uh, we conclude that um, there is a significant regional effect uh, on the temperature Okay, so this is uh, the uh, the FANOVA model. When the um, uh, the the covariates is a, is just a group group of information. So this is the NOVA model. So now suppose um, we observed uh, the uh, scalar covariates uh, that I went to that IP, uh, then uh, so we can uh, write down the model uh, as the following. So we have a response one i t, and we have the predictor that i j. And uh, so the difference here is that uh, we have our uh, parameter beta j t uh, change over time. Okay. So uh, if you're familiar with the very coefficient model, this is very close to the very coefficient model, right? Yes. Okay. So, um, so this is the functional uh, scalar model, a general form. Okay. So then uh, we can fit this model um, by a uh, list of squares. Okay. Um, so first we will uh, write down uh, we will write down this model. Uh, so 
as a, a general vector form. Uh, so then this model will be written as a yit times zi times beta t plus epsilon it. So zi here is a vector of the order scalar covariate. And then uh, we can uh, do the least square estimation. So basically, if you do the least square estimation, uh, you will find out that beta t will be equal to uh, z transpose z inverse z transpose times yt. So this is just the least squares estimation. Um, but uh, generally, uh, we don't like uh, this uh, formula uh, for beta t. The reason is that if you look at this formula, you will see that um, the smoothness of beta t will generally will just depend on the smoothness on the yt, right? So if your yt is not a smooth, then your beta t will not be smooth either, right? So in other words, if you're using this formula, you have no control on the smoothness on the beta t, right? So here, beta t represents the um, time varying effect of zi on the yit. So as I mentioned before, when we estimate this beta t, we want this beta t to be, um, to be smooth, right? Uh, so then it will be um, easier to interpret the meaning of the beta t, and also it will also help uh, prevent overfitting problem, right? So therefore, um, although this formula is simple, we don't uh, want to calculate the beta t based on this formula. Okay, so um, what we can do is that, uh, again, um, in order to control the smoothness on the beta t, we will write uh, beta t as a linear combination of the basic functions, okay? And then we will uh, plug in the formula uh, for beta t um, into this uh, uh, least square estimation. So then <coughs> we will do the uh, do the least squares by minimizing this summation of integrated squared of the residuals. So we plug in the formula for the beta jt as a linear combination of the basic functions. And uh, we write down all the basic coefficient as a long vector. D. And, and uh, then uh, this, uh, uh, we will define this uh, sign it as zi1 times the phi1, uh, etc. So then you can do the algebra and you will find out the estimation for B will be uh, in this form. So again, here we have no control on the roughness of the beta t. We want beta t to be smooth, right? So therefore, we will add a roughness penalty on the beta jt. So we define the uh, beta jt as a, a, a integral of squared of a, a general differential operator on the beta jt. So if, we, if the beta jt, for generally, we were just using the second derivative of beta jt uh, to define the roughness penalty. And if we want the beta jt to be periodic function, and we were using, um, we were using the uh, harmonic acceleration differential operator to define this roughness penalty. So then we can write down this uh, uh, summation of the roughness penalty term 
as a general matrix form in this quadratic form. This R is only uh, contains the uh, information from the basic functions. So then we can write down the formula for the basic coefficient of B. And uh, so you see here, we have this uh, roughing the penalty term here. And now we are able to control the smoothness of beta T. Um, we also, we can choose in the uh, smoothing parameter by Liu one curve out cross validation. Okay, so basically what we do is that uh, every time we will remove one curve out and then we will estimate the uh, functional parameter beta t um, without that curve, okay? And then we will look at how, the, uh, how this uh, estimated uh, uh, model fit to the, to the deleted curve. And so this is uh, the, we define the cross validation score. Um, and, uh, and then we can choose in the smoothing parameter by minimizing the cross validation scores. So unfortunately, um, uh, this uh, core validation scores uh, is not uh, implemented in R. So you have to present, you have to program yourself. But I don't think it's hard to, to, to program. So here is a, is a, is a summary uh, of the, um, is a function on scalar regression. So basically, um, it's like a, a linear regression at the time, each time t, but we want to um, uh, estimate the beta t as a basic function expansion. So then we can control the smoothness on the beta t. And we can also use the permutation f test to test the overall significance of the functional co of the uh, covariates on the function. Okay, so this is uh, this is the introduction on the function on scalar regression. So um, yes, let me stop here. <laughs>